10 most scenic drives in the US. This is going to be a good video to check out. Check out some nice places where you can drive from and stuff. So I don't really think the UK has many scenic drives at all. I don't even think we could even come up with 10. I'm excited to jump into this and see what we got. The Oregon coast. The whole coast is very nice, but I wanted to focus on the parks between Lincoln City and Brookings. This follows US Highway 101, and for most of the stretch right along the coast, there are a few mm. spots where you go a little bit inland. But one thing that is really great about Oregon is that all of the beaches are public. There's public access all along the way, and there's no big development going up and down the coast. There are no oh, big wow. cities. In fact, the biggest towns are under 10,000 people. There is a part where you go inland a little bit around Coos Bay, which is the big city in the area with about 15,000 people. But all of the coastal towns have less than 10,000. Effectively, the entire Oregon coast is one big state park, and there are all kinds of spots where you can stop and get out to the beach. It's Yo, a that would be so nice. I just drive it. Like, imagine just driving to a friend's house, and you drive there. Let's say it's like 30 minutes an hour or whatever, right? Your drive there is on the coast. Wow. Bro, that 30 minute an hour drive would feel like 10 minutes. It's really nice to see one long stretch of coastline in the U.S. that isn't completely developed with giant hotels and big cities. Next, I want to talk about the drive in and around Theodore Roosevelt National Park in western North Dakota. If you didn't know beforehand and you had to guess what state this was based on this footage, you might need about 40 guesses or so to get North Dakota. <laughs> this is one of my favorite national parks in the country, and it's a great spot to get away from crowds. And you'll see a lot of wildlife here, a ton of bison, a lot of wild horses. What, even while driving? dog towns. Wait, so even while I was driving, you would like see these? Yo, that'd be insane. Imagine driving and just see like a pack of bison or horses just running by. Wildlife here, a ton of bison, a lot of wild horses, big prairie dog towns. And just the general scenery of the North Dakota Badlands is beautiful. There are two different units to the National Park, the North and South Unit. Hardly anybody goes to the South Unit, and even fewer go to the North Unit. You can drive around each of the two units, and US Highway 85 connects them both. If you're driving through the North Unit outside of the time between Memorial Day and Labor Day, there's a very good chance you won't see anybody else in the park. I'm glad that you put late May, early September, because I have no clue when those days are. <laughs> time between Memorial Day and Labor Day, there's a very good chance you won't see anybody else in the park except for maybe a park ranger. Oh, wow. There's really nowhere else in the U.S. that has this type of scenery, and yes, it's in North Dakota. The next drive I want to talk about is in their neighbor to the south, South Dakota. When most people oh, think of... Oh, okay. Yo, I could drive. Oh, that'd be so nice. Bro, honestly, if you guys got any spare time, do like an example drive through um, America. I'm thinking I'm in America. Do like an example drive through uh, the UK and you can choose so many videos. I bet you any money, you can barely find one really nice one. About as in their neighbor to the south, South Dakota. When most people think of scenic beauty in South Dakota, they're going to wow. think about Mount Rushmore and the Black Hills first, and that's both very nice. But what I wanted to talk about here is the drive between the town of Custer and Badlands National Park. That's Just unreal. east of the town of Custer, you get to Custer State Park. And this has got some nice scenery, but the best part about this drive is you're basically guaranteed to see a whole bunch of bison. They'll just oh, be wow. there chilling, roaming the streets, wishing people weren't there to bother them. That's sick. But going a little bit farther east, you get to Badlands National Park, and this is where the scenery gets really gorgeous. The last time <sighs> I was at this park, it was really cold, a bit too cold to be going hiking, but the drive is really nice going through the park, so you can see some really nice scenery and not even get out of your car. That's beautiful. Heading way southeast. In the war? You guys are driving in the war? Some really nice scenery and not even get out of your car. Huh? Heading way southeast is the drive across the Florida Keys. I'm talking specifically here US Highway 1 between Key Largo and Key West. Yo, that's insane. That's insane. And you, you drive on like this for like two hours? Oh, that is so sick. Bro, I hate driving and I would love to drive on this. Bro, two hours, uh, yeah, like me driving two hours, I can't stand it in the UK. But driving two hours here, I won't even mind doing that every day. Uh, maybe not every day, maybe every other day. <laughs> 
but yeah, that's wow. Wow. The whole drive between the two is almost like being on one big bridge. You go through all kinds of small islands, the keys, and the whole time you're just seeing this beautiful turquoise water. Unreal. There are several spots where you can stop and get out of your car along the way. And I remember I stopped at one and got out of the car and saw a couple of iguanas running around. I could see this road being kind of a pain in the butt and high traffic on busy holiday weekends, but oh. it's all worth it when you get to the end. Well, to be fair, even if you're stuck on traffic there, right? You're stuck and you can just look around. It's just beautiful. I wouldn't even care. At the Conk Republic. In my opinion, the most beautiful stretch of drive along an interstate is Interstate 70 in the central part of Colorado. Between the towns oh. of Eagle and Idaho Springs is the highest elevation of anywhere on a U.S. interstate. The highest point is Loveland Pass at just under 12,000 feet. To go over the Beautiful. pass, the interstate itself goes through a tunnel, but you can take a side exit and go on U.S. Highway 6 to go over the actual pass. Are we in the same country? <laughs> Wait, what's happening? What's going on? And with you being at almost 12,000 feet for a good chunk of the year, there's going to be a lot of snow on the mountains. So if you want to experience high altitude and thin air but not go on some crazy hike or on some weird back roads, you can do it on I-70 in central Colorado. Next up, arguably the most famous drive in the U.S., the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh -huh. This goes through a large Ooh. part of the southern Appalachians in North Carolina and Virginia and my favorite part of the drive is the stretch between Asheville and Boone. You go right near Mount Mitchell, which is the highest peak in the eastern U.S. And this is a very nice drive no matter what time of the year you do this. The most popular time is going to be the fall, especially October, during the peak fall foliage season. Oh, wow. But that's wow. also when it's the busiest. So you can go in the spring or summer, and it's still very nice. That is unreal. Mountains in the... Oh. I, I don't care. I'm moving, bro. I, I don't care. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. Very green. And even during the winter with no leaves on the trees and oh, the light and the snow, it is still very pretty. Yeah, that's Next nice, but falls is arguably bad. the most famous drive in the western U.S., and that's the Big Sur Coastline in California. You've probably seen footage and images of this drive many times, and a lot of folks that are not familiar with California think this is much farther north in the state than it is. This is California Highway 1 between the towns of Carmel and San Simeon, which is where Hearst Castle is. And for most of this drive, you're along a big high cliff. There's all kinds of pull-offs. You can look over at some big drop-offs down to the ocean. And there's some serious wilderness between the coast and the valley on the other side of the mountains. Is this the road that's on Grand Theft Auto 5? Is this it? It, it? it feels very familiar. And every few years, one of those bridges gets washed out and the road has to be closed. And the handful of people that live back there are basically cut off from society until the road gets repaired. What? So this is a drive where you'll definitely want to pull over at some of the turnouts to get your photos and some nice views, as opposed to ooing and aahing while you're driving. Is that awful? Next, I want to mention the north shore of the upper peninsula of Michigan along Lake Superior. Specifically, I'm talking about the stretch between the towns of Marquette and Grand Marais. You're hugging the lake shore for a big chunk of this drive. You can see Grand Island out in the lake as you go around it. And it goes right to Pictured Rock National Lakeshore, which is a really nice spot. You can't beautiful. see the beautiful cliffs of Pictured Rock from the road, but you are not that far from it. But even if you don't go off the main road into the National Lakeshore, just staying on the road is a really nice drive. You'll go around some nice sand dunes and you'll end up in the really cute town of Grand Marais. Most of the UP of Michigan is very beautiful, very wooded, but especially the spot along the north shore of the Upper Peninsula is where you have some of the most beautiful views. Next up is a nice drive around some mountain lakes in western Maine. I'm talking primarily about the areas around Wrangley Lake, Mount Blue State Park, and the Sandy River Valley. Part of this area is called the Carabasset Valley. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but... Wait, Carabasket? Is that the... I've never seen the show, but is that from uh, the show Tiger King? Carabasque. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be saying wrong with that. I have no clue. Just some nice wilderness mountain lakes. Wrangley, or maybe it's Wrangley. That's nice. I know it's a very popular spot for people from Maine to go to in the summer. Popular spot for people to have cabins. 
but even if you're just doing oh, wow. the loop drive in the area, you'll get some really fantastic scenery. Is that heaven? And I'm pretty sure there are some characters from Stephen King novels buried out there. And in general, huh? I'm pretty sure there are some characters from Stephen King novels buried out there. Trash on. And in general, western slash northwestern Maine is where you're going to find some of the deepest wilderness in the eastern U.S. Oh, I thought this was grass. It's trees. <laughs> I thought it was like, yo, I'm so... bro. I do have a bad eye. <laughs> I'm so dumb, I swear. I'm so, I, why do you guys watch me? <laughs> and now for what I think is the most beautiful drive in the U.S. is to drive in southern Utah going through the national parks Zion, Bryce Canyon, and Capitol Reef. This is classic canyon country and a big part of the Grand Circle road trip tour that a lot of people do. Uh -huh. The whole Grand Circle includes the five national parks oh. of Utah, as well as the Grand Canyon and other parts of northern Arizona. But I do think this particular stretch is the most beautiful. You Driving drive through, through this? Bryce Canyon National Park requires going down a spur road into oh, the park, wow. but it's definitely worth it. And there's another spot called the Hogback, which is just this crazy ridge. It's a narrow road with a big steep drop off on both sides. I've driven over that part many times and... When I've been with other people, they always get kind of freaked out. Probably isn't the best time to have a tire blow out. Yo, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I would be terrified. You, you go off the road by anything? Man. You'll also go through Grand Staircase, Escalante National Monument, and a bunch of state parks as well. And the road goes right through Capitol Reef National Park, which is where you'll see some of the most colorful sandstone in the U.S. Wow. This drive Beautiful. is much longer than the other ones I talked about in the video, but it is definitely worth checking out the entire route. Although I do highly recommend stopping at least a few times along the way and probably want to make this a multi-day drive. So that's my overview of the 10 most scenic drives. Crazy. In the really good watch though. I actually enjoyed that a lot. I've never really wanted to go out driving as bad as I do now watching this. But yeah, great video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.